So in our last video, we were able to very easily animate 10 different blocks moving on the screen uh, at random speeds with random colors starting at random locations. And it looked really neat. However, uh, they didn't bounce off each other. And so we want to be able to do that. So we're going to first add another method to our blocks class. So we're going to define a method and we're going to call it collide. And it's going to take, other than self, it's going to take one parameter which is a sprite group. And it's important to note that in Pygame, and using Pygame sprites, it detects collisions between a single sprite and then a sprite group. So even if you want to detect a collision between two individual sprites, one of them uh, must be in a sprite group. So it's possible to have a sprite group with one element. Uh, and you'll see that at different times this year. So the main uh, method we'll use here is something called pygame.sprite.spritecollide. And this method takes um, three parameters. One, it takes the, sp the single individual sprite you're testing. And in this case, I'm going to test self, which refers to the single sprite I'm testing, a single instance of a block, okay, whichever block I happen to be looking at. And then the sprite group is the one that's passed. And then the last parameter is either true or false. If the last parameter is false, that means the sprite stays in the sprite group. If the parameter is true, it's removed from the sp sprite group and would therefore probably disappear off the screen. So if you want your sprite uh, to disappear if after it's coll collided into, you'd make this last parameter true. We're going to leave it false for right now. Okay, so Basically, if it detects a collision between the sprite I'm testing and a sprite in the sprite group, or any sprite in that sprite group, we want it to bounce off. And luckily, it's the same uh, kind of code that we use for bouncing off the walls. So if it collides with a sprite, bounce off in the opposite direction. So we'll do speed y equals negative speed y. Oops, sorry, I got self, self dot speed y and we'll do the same thing for x speed x equals negative self dot speed x now in a realistic collision would it just bounce off in the same direction that it, that it hit not always a lot depends on the angle and the speed and so on if it's spinning so while this is going to look pretty good it won't be completely physically accurate but that's all we need for our collide method. We just test to see if our instance of our sprite hits any sprite in the sprite group. It's going to leave it in there and just reverse direction. Now we just need to add some code to our, our main file and we'll see if we can get it to work. So on our main file, we're just going to add a little loop that's going to check each block. So we're going to call it for a block in our blocks group. Okay, so we're just going to loop over our blocks group. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to remove the blocks we're testing from that group. And the reason we do that is if you test a sprite that's also in a sprite group, it's going to collide with itself. And when something collide with, with itself, it's going to cause a lot of problems. So basically, Every sprite would be trying to change direction at the same time, and you just get a lot of vibrating sprites on the screen, which is not what you want. So if you're going to test a sprite, you have to first remove it from the sprite group so we can test it. And now that it's removed, we're going to run the collide method on it. And we're going to pass it the blocks group, which is our sprite group. Okay. So in this case, we're going through each block. We first remove that block from the group. We see if it hits any other block in the sprite group. And whether it does or not, we add it back in after we've tested it so that it can be tested against the next block. If you took all of them out and didn't add them back in, they would never collide again. And that's it. And so that's all the code um, for us to detect collisions. So let's see if this works, and we're probably going to hit some errors here. 
There we go. So you can see that a lot of the blocks are bouncing off of each other in the kind of way we, we thought they would. But you can see these two started out overlapping. And because they're constantly hitting each other, they're just vibrating in place because they can't move far enough to not be joined together. If we wanted to write accurate code, we would code to take care of this kind of error. Um, but since we're being kind of lazy right now, we won't. We can run it again to see if we can ever get it. There we go. And these are kind of banging into each other, not uh, moving around, but at least they're not overlapping. But you can see the, the, the sprites bounce off the walls and they bounce off each other. So now we have more realistic blocks bouncing around. We'll try it one more time. You got to do it multiple times to see if you can get it to. That's pretty good right there. In fact, that's probably the best we're going to do for right now. But you can see you've got different colors. You've got blocks moving at different speeds um, around the screen, which makes for an interesting display. So though it doesn't seem like much, you actually now have the tools to make some pretty interesting games. Um, things like a Pac-Man style game where you have um, uh, one sprite moving over others and as it eats them, the sprites disappear. So um, with a little time and effort, you can make some pretty sophisticated games. So in the next unit, we're going to look at add, how to actually add different images and sounds rather than having just plain old boring shapes.